Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Menu of Options work group makeup session. We had a really good uh, participation and really vibrant discussion on Thursday of last week with uh, several members that uh, were able to join then, but we're happy that uh, you are able to join today and uh, we look forward to your feedback on the prototypes that we have drafted. And so what we're going to do this morning is we're going to uh, first introduce ourselves and I'm going to ask just the members of the work group to um, uh, introduce themselves and uh, state their name and where they're from. And as a reminder, this is a meeting that meets open records meetings. So we have to have our cameras on at all times. And if you're a member and also if you uh, have contributions, if you would uh, open your mic and talk, uh, we would appreciate that. So uh, looking forward to your good feedback. But first, let's again start with introductions. And um, Susan Dougal, I see you. You're just on my screen. Would you care to, to kick us off, please? Yes, I'm Susan Dougal. Uh, I uh, work with UK Next Gen and also am a retired educator from Shelby County. I see Jordan. Yeah, I'm Jordan Pack. I'm a teacher in Floyd County and a representative for um, the American Federation of Teachers in Kentucky. Thank you. I see Betty. Okay. I can't tell if I'm muted. I can't see. We can hear you. Oh, good. Okay. So sorry. I'm usually, I usually mute myself. Uh, I'm Betty Edwards. I'm a former, former, former. I retired, retired, retired officially last week after the third time. So I am now retired. I am so excited, but I am a former director of curriculum assessment for the state of Kentucky, former Kentucky educator, former vice president of testing measure progress, and uh, just retired as a consultant with Special Olympics. Wonderful. Glad that you are here. I see uh, Kim Parker Brown. <clears throat> Let me make sure I'm not on. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. I'm Kim Parker Brown um, from Lexington, Kentucky, and I am the grad recruiter for Georgetown College. Wonderful. Thank you for being here. And um, I think the last member we have is Kathy Stovall, but certain last but certainly not the least. Good morning. I guess we're introducing ourselves. <laughs> Is that yes. what we're doing? I got on a yes. little bit late. Hi, I'm Kathy Stovall and I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, and I serve on the um, Kentucky United We Learn Council as a community representative and as an educator. Well, thank you all. Have I missed any of our um, members? If, if I've missed any of our members, please. Uh, unmute and introduce yourself. Okay, sounds like I have it. So let's go very quickly to our facilitators. Um, Laura, uh, can I ask you to kick us off? Because I, I see you on our my screen. Um, good morning and afternoon, everybody. My name is Laura Pensnow. I'm an associate at the Center for Assessment. Um, and I've been involved with the Accelerated Innovation Standing Committee, and I'm excited to support this group as well. Thank you all for being here today. I'll pass it to Susan. Hello, everyone. My name is Susan Lyons. I run a small consulting firm at, um, focused on assessment and accountability, and I've been part of the Kentucky United We Learn project from the beginning. Glad to be here. Thank you all. How about Lillian? Thanks. Hi, everyone. Lillian Pace uh, with KnowledgeWorks. I'm a vice president of policy, so I'm here to support um, how to navigate the federal and state policy systems as we um, come up with a solution uh, for the new assessment accountability approach. 
um, and I have been supporting the Building a Bold New Future uh, Committee. And I'll pass to Paul. Uh, good morning, everyone. Paul Leather, I'm a partner with the Center for Innovation and Education. Been uh, working with the uh, uh, council uh, since its inception. Thank you all for uh, being here. I'm going to share my screen. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, if I click it to, are you seeing my the agenda? Anybody seeing? It? Oh, good. Thank you for the head nod, Susan. I see you shaking your head. Uh, we're going to uh, present the same. Um, agenda and the same um, direction that we had with our Thursday group. We had a little bit longer with our Thursday group. It was um, three hours instead of just one. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take the same agenda but reduce the time frame. So we're going to get uh, a highlight of um, our overview of our prototype uh, document. Um, and then uh, we're going to talk about the iterative feedback, uh, discussion, and um, uh, vision, uh, and prototypes. Then we're going to ask you along the way to um, respond uh, back to the um, the prototypes, what you think about the, the vision and the prototypes, get your feedback, and then share some next steps uh, with you. Um, so we've done the, the introductions, um, the the overview and prototype of the prototype document. You've seen that it was version 1.0. Uh, you saw how it was laid out. There were uh, the introduction, the vision. Uh, we captured that through the April cool convening. Uh, many of you all were there and got to hear the conversation with the menu of options work group. So we have um, Based on your feedback, um, the facilitators, uh, we put together what we thought we heard. And we want this meeting for you to tell us if we've hit that mark. Um, we are uh, wanting your feedback because these prototypes are not set in stone. Uh, we talked about many different directions on the prototypes, uh, whether we actually put them all together or we put those um, those different components individually and have people respond and reflect on each of the different essential elements. Um, in the end, the decision, because we had talked about the prototype so much during the April convening and we had promised those collection of prototypes, we went ahead and put those prototypes, but we could have uh, put together multiple. These four represent uh, a range, if you will, from the um, most um, innovative uh, that really pushes on us changing our ESSA state plan, all the way through um, prototype four, that if we get no changes, to our, any of our state legislation, and we would not need any changes to our ESSA state plan. So they represent a range. We want your feedback uh, because the next step, um, we're going to continue to update this document. Uh, you all, as the member of, uh, of the menu of options work group got to see version 1.0. It was not distributed uh, widely, only to you so that um, we could get your feedback because we did not want to go out broadly without having your voice uh, in the reflection of those prototypes that were put together. So we're going to have this iterative uh, feedback process. Um, today, uh, we are going to gather your feedback. Again, we had members of the Menu of Options work group give us a, a lot of good feedback on Thursday. We'll continue to uh, get feedback uh, on uh, the document. We're talking to uh, L3s, the local labs of learning, this afternoon. Uh, they haven't seen the prototypes, but they're going to give us some in, uh, feedback on the, the different components. 
of um, different elements within there. Then after the, the, that collection of feedback, a version 2.0 will be distributed broadly. So we're working toward updating the version that you received so that we can go out more broadly and uh, go out to many different stakeholders and get feedback from them. So the plan then is after we collect a lot of feedback on that version 2.0, then move into the July 29th cool convening with all that feedback and a up uh, with an updated version to for our cool council members. So uh, after we get the cool council feedback, then we're going to go to the Kentucky Board of Education. So it's an iterative process. We are going to get many people involved in the conversation. You being the, the first and foremost to put out um, the, those prototypes. So let me pause there and see if um, any of my um, colleagues, my fellow facilitators wants to add to any of that I said about the prototype document or the iterative feedback plan before we go into the discussion of the vision and prototypes. Or any questions from our members? So version uh, 2.0 will include all the prototypes also? Well, that's a good question, Betty. We're really looking forward to your discussion today. We got uh, a lot of good, really good feedback from our members on Thursday. Um, and we're waiting to see how this group responds to see how 2.0 will look and feel. So it really depends, it really depends on you because those prototypes are not set in stone. There, uh, there's not um, a plan for an a, assessment or an accountability here in, at KDE in the drawer. There's, there's nothing that has been uh, pre-planned or pre-decided. We are really seeking feedback from, from you and other stakeholders on this because it's uh, we value those those uh, characteristics and those um, the those characteristics that the Kentucky United we learn with co-creation and reciprocity. So we want to make sure that we are following those. So uh, version two point is going to be driven by our members of this of this group. So good question. I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. Okay, if there's no other questions, I'm going to uh, continue to share and um, turn it over to Susan Lyons. All right, thank you, Jennifer. Um, Good morning, everybody. So we're going to try and do this really quickly so that we can save enough time for your discussion. But if at any point I'm moving through this too quickly and you have a clarifying question, please uh, unmute yourself or raise your hand or take advantage of our chat feature because this is your meeting and we want to make sure you're getting what you need to out of it in order to provide us feedback. As Jennifer just mentioned, uh, your feedback today will really inform version 2.0. One of the key questions we have for you today is, are you as a menu of options member comfortable bringing forth this particular prototype? And we're gonna discuss all four of them to further discussion at the cool council meeting at the end of July. If you're not comfortable with a prototype, we'll for sure, uh, we need to know that. <laughs> if you don't wanna discuss something, if you don't want something on the table, we need to know that. So um, first, before we get into each of the characteristics of the four prototypes, what we're gonna spend just a few minutes talking about is a vision statement. We wanted to develop a vision statement for a reimagined assessment and accountability system for the Commonwealth of Kentucky 
that is free from policy considerations or constraints. What this vision statement attempts to do is capture to our best of our ability what we heard you all saying at our menu of options working group meeting in April at the Cool Council convening. There were a lot of ideas expressed there, a lot of energy around new kinds of systems that might be put in place. And what we wanted to do was to try and capture that discussion and reflect it back to you to say, did we get it right? Our, is our North Star the same? And then what each of the prototypes does is sort of walk back from that vision and sort of understand how might we move closer to that vision within the state and federal policy landscape that we're all working within, recognizing states and the Department of Education certainly does not have just full authority to, to launch into the vision right away. But the vision of statement nevertheless remains central in understanding what we're all working towards. So if we get that wrong, let us know so that we can sort of reorient in the right direction and make sure we're all pointing towards that moonshot moon landing. So in our vision statement, we're talking about a reimagined assessment and accountability system that prioritizes transparency and also prioritizes formative evaluative feedback to schools that are in line with local school improvement processes and innovations. So this is an accreditation style evaluation system where schools are evaluated across a broad range of indicators. Some of them state that are consistent across the state, and some of them are fully locally determined. The ones that are consistent across the state really mirror more of an accreditation style approach to evaluating school quality than what we currently think of as school accountability, where all of the indicators and the evidence are exactly standardized across the state. In the vision statement, we have a broad range of domains but how, student, how schools present evidence of quality in each of those domains will vary locally. It will allow for the inclusion of process-based data where schools are submitting, here are the processes and the procedures we have in place to ensure quality, and here are the indicators to show that we're making progress in each of these domains. What will be common statewide in terms of the state domains, and so if you look in gray here, these are just straw man proposals for the kinds of domains that could be put forth. Some will be common across the state. And in those cases, they will have common statewide rubrics. So schools will be receiving ratings on each of those domains relative to a common rubric. And while the rubric is common, the evidence of quality that schools present, some will be the same statewide and some will be locally dependent and locally variable. All of that information will be displayed on a state provided but locally customizable data display where schools can continually upload and refresh their evidence of quality and upon um, it, uh, regular intervals, submit that evidence to be re-evaluated by the external evaluator against those rubrics and, and to provide new ratings. The local school board of education, the school and district leaders, and the external evaluator will work collaboratively to determine what the goals will be for each of those schools and identify the resources that schools need in order to meet those goals and, and sort of the supports that they could request then from the state. Um, those reevaluations will happen at regular, regular intervals, but at least once every three years. This system of school accountability, though it looks quite different from our current system, will continue to have annual assessments of student achievement. Jennifer, could you please go to the next slide? This is an area where we heard you all speaking in April about different ways that students might be assessed. And we sort of heard two different visions and so we wanted to put here um, options reflecting what we thought we heard. And we'd love your feedback on sort of which of these options resonates most with what you were, uh, with your thinking. 
So option A would be a statewide through year adaptive model where uh, students would be assessed above and below grade level in addition to the on grade level standards in order to meet them where they are. The through year model would allow the state to value within year growth of students and, and allow that within year growth to be reflected back on the um, data displays alongside the proficiency information. Option A includes a more streamlined set of statewide assessments assessing only ELA and math and then science once per grade span. Um, and it would then sort of this reduced footprint of a state assessment would then allow for um, create room for local innovations in local assessment systems um, to assess the other content areas. And importantly, the data displays would create room for those local assessments of student learning in the arts and social studies and the in sciences to be displayed alongside the statewide assessment results of the through year assessment. Um, those local assessments could include more authentic demonstrations of learning, such as student defenses of learning or locally curriculum embedded performance assessments. Option B sort of takes that desire for more authentic assessments of students' achievement and brings it into the statewide system of assessment. So this is a more personalized or competency-based approach to assessing student achievement in math and ELA and science in a statewide way. So this would involve statewide and local performance assessments that would be used together to provide determinations of student proficiency on the state academic standards. It would allow the prioritization of multiple sources of evidence, many of them locally determined and more authentic to the work that students are doing as part of their courses and as part of the learning process. Um, this would require a really comprehensive and ongoing approach to professional learning. It would be an investment in our educators um, to ensure that they're equipped with the skills and resources that they need to administer and score these more authentic um, and locally developed demonstrations of learning that would ultimately go into um, determining student proficiency. Uh, and in order to ensure comparability, validity, technical quality, there would be an auditing process in place where both the processes would be audited as, as well as the student assessment data. Um, and it would be complemented or triangulated with um, a really sparsely sampled short form standardized assessment, kind of like the National Assessment of Educational Pro Progress, where not every student is assessed on every standard, standard, but there's more of a sampling approach as a sort of a quality control mechanism. Um, so these present sort of two different ways that we could approach an assessment system, all as part of our vision. And so I'm going to pause there to see if there's any clarifying questions about our vision statement and also welcome critiques um, or other comments about whether or not we sort of hit the nail on the head with this vision statement. I have a question. This is Kim Parker Brown. On option A, are we integrating um, the state uh, um, assessments with the local assessments across the board is that is that is that what i'm hearing so for option, me. great question kim so for option a the state assessment in many ways might replace the need for districts to go out and purchase their own local interim assessment program. So many districts right now purchase NWEA MAP or iReady or Renaissance Star to give as their benchmark assessments multiple times a year. The state assessment would serve that same function. It would likely be administered three times a year and it would be adaptive um, and intended to help provide instructional information. It wouldn't, though, however, incorporate local assessment information in making the student determinations of proficiency. Instead, the local assessments would be used in the other content areas, not instead of 
not in math and ELA. And those results would just be reported on the data display and used to help um, in the evaluation of the academic learning indicator um, domain, rather, in the school quality evaluation framework. Okay, I'm gonna keep going with this. <laughs> okay, my next question would be, at the, if this is three times a year, um, in the meantime, in between time, are the school districts waiting for these scores to come so they can prepare their CSIPs in order to find out where their students are as far as growth is concerned? And if so, what is going to be the wait time? It's a great question. This vision statement is intended to be at a really high level in that doesn't get into each of the operational components, but the goal would be that this could uh, uh, provide real-time information in terms of where students are in that content domain and the subdomains, similarly to how the interim assessment programs are doing it now, and other states have been successful at, at providing um, real-time or close to real-time data in that way with this model. Thank you. <laughs> Susan, um, Kathy has a similar question in the chat about timing of assessment. I don't know if you want to catch that. Um, wondering about sort of the real time reporting process now and how that data might be used to inform accountability and assessment. Kathy, would you mind speaking to your question just so I'm sure I'm understanding? Thank you, Lillian. Well, I had several questions, and well, and it is about the real-time reporting. What is the current process for real-time reporting, if we have any at all? And how will national data on reading and math be used for accountability and assessment to determine what our next steps are? And does the NAEP uh, reports matter as it relates to reading and math? And then just listening to you answer, um, to answer Kim, what interventions will there be to support any of the uh, local districts outside when reading and math are not achieved, the scores and the grades are not there. What interventions will be there to support that, the districts, so that they can um, move forward with, with their student, with the professional development, and with the learning of their students? Sure. So I'll speak to the last question first. <laughs> uh, so the idea of school interventions and support in our vision statement um, would be highly customized at the local level. So when the local school board of education and the school and district leaders and the external evaluator are meeting, they'd be looking at the range of data across all of the domains, not just the academic learning domain to determine what is the profile of supports and set of resources that the schools need to need access to in order to achieve their local priorities and goals. And so they would be sort of co-determined by this um, multi-group, um, multi-stakeholder group um, that would decide both the set of goals and the next steps. And so the assessment itself likely wouldn't provide direct information about here are the here are the interventions that are likely needed for your students, but it would rather provide the data that would then help this group of stakeholders decide what are the best steps for helping our students move forward. In terms of national benchmarking, um, this is something that is often done in the standard setting process for assessments. It's, it's done, I'm sure, in the state of Kentucky and would continue in either assessment option, where when we determine what makes a student Efficient. The state is looking at national uh, comparisons to other states, as well as comparisons to the National Assessment of Educational Progress. Did that answer your question, Kathy? Well, yes, yeah, sort of. I'll come back to it later. Okay. In the interest of time, it might make sense to transition to each of the four prototypes, but I don't want to cut short. Um, discussion of the vision, if you think there's something that um, relates to whether or not this vision accurately reflects 
uh, our discussion in April or if we've somehow missed the mark. Well, I guess I was wanted a little more uh, information on option two because I, that seems looser and we were concerned about timing in option A. I see nothing about timing or any of that in, in option B. So could you go over in a little more detail? I absolutely that that yeah absolutely i'm happy to betty and i also just want to reiterate that this is a really high level vision statement in which it's intended to be directional and there are in both of these options probably hundreds of decisions if not thousands of decisions to be made in terms of what is the actual design and implementation but broadly in option b b we're envisioning a more performance-based assessment system model that would likely incorporate both statewide um, performance tasks or common performance tasks as well as more locally or locally developed or at least locally relevant performance assessments. The annual determinations of student proficiency would likely be made by the educators themselves in looking at a portfolio of student work from authentic demonstrations of learning throughout the year. And those annual determinations of proficiency would be what would be um, audited and supported in order to ensure comparability and validity. And so those um, proficiency decisions. So th this is where the comprehensive set of supports in terms of professional learning and resources and training comes in, as well as um, those more technical quality audits in terms of processing, like are we doing local calibrations, and then um, analyzing the data, particularly using those statewide common tasks to ensure for comparability, as well as the external sort of mini summative assessment that would be matrix sample to ensure that um, what we say is proficient by one educator uh, means the same thing with another educator in another district. This is a quite innovative approach and would certainly require the application on the behalf of the Department of Education to um, submit for the Innovative Assessment Demonstration Authority, as it really wouldn't be able to be scaled statewide immediately. It would need to be piloted in a small set of districts and worked out before we figured out landed on a model that could be more fully scaled but this would be a way to incorporate those more authentic demonstrations of learning that are already happening in so many districts in kentucky and bring them into the formal assessment system thank you Susan, I did note in option B, I've, I've struggled with it ever since I've read it, that it does concern me that they're about the accountability. And I feel like it's really loose. And I just hearing you say that there would be pilots, I think that that's going to be really critical to what, what is being done because we just can't uh, say this is how it's going to be done and not have any any. Uh, I don't know what the word is I'm trying to use, but we need more follow up on this one. This one I struggled with. Thank you, Kathy. That's good feedback for more detail on how are we ensuring equity in expectations across all. All right. So I hate to cut the conversations short, but I don't want to do short trip to any of our four prototypes. And so we'll sort of briefly move into the four prototypes now, um, where prototype one is our attempt at, or our best attempt to bring the fullness of the vision statement into a state accountability system. So this is where um, significant advocacy work would need to take place in order to um, ask our General Assembly to reconsider the state accountability system and adopt something that looks like and reflects the vision. And so in this case, the full domain or the full set of domains of school, school quality would be evaluated, process-based information would be used, an external evaluator would sort of provide ratings on rubrics across these domains, and all of this would live within the state accountability system. So the current state accountability system uh, in that 
um, the federal accountability indicators are used to produce color ratings would disappear and this would be in its place. In terms of the federal accountability system, we still would need to meet the minimum federal requirements that the Every Student Succeeds Act puts in place for states in terms of school accountability, but we could streamline it to meet the minimum requirements. So that would be scaling back the number and length of assessments. That would be removing the color ratings and only identifying schools in terms of meeting expectations or qualify for different interve um, interventions and supports, such as targeted supports and interventions and comprehensive supports. Um, so this is an attempt where our where um, the the report cards are could be redesigned to really reflect that vision to the extent possible, a lot while also reporting on a scaled down version of our federal accountability indicators. But the state would really lean into that innovative uh, accountability system on the state side. And I'll go to the next slide, Jennifer. Um, so this, of course, comes with implications for federal policy. Um, on the federal side, the lift would be fairly light in terms of just um, we were you know, redesigning the system to meet those federal requirements so that we would just need to submit an amendment to our current state plan. Um, and we would need to resubmit our assessment systems to the peer, peer review process to make sure that even though the assessments are shorter, they're still meeting the federal minimum requirements for technical quality and alignment. The state implications are more significant in that the General Assembly would need to uh, um, understand and agree with and get on board with our vision from the Kentucky United We Learn Council for a reimagined assessment and accountability system. And they would need to revise um, the state laws pertaining to accountability that would um, then put this system in place. And so we'll move into the questions here um, in terms of clarifying questions. And, um, and other comments related to suggested modifications or whether or not you're comfortable bringing this prototype for discussion um, with the full council at the end of July. I guess my one question is between the options and the prototypes. So if you have two options, how are they reflected in the prototypes? That's a great question, Betty. So the idea, the metaphor that we've been using here, because there's um, infinite numbers of permutations and combinations that we could put in terms of options and prototypes is a buffet. Or So you can imagine you have a plated meal and you have your state accountability system, your assessment system, your federal accountability system, your reporting, your school supports, they're all on each, take a section of your plate. And you can sort of switch in and out the options that um, appeal to you. So that's sort of the process and approach we're trying to take here. And sort of that was the nature of the survey that Jennifer had sent out to you last month. And sort of at each sort of decision point, what resonates and what doesn't. So hopefully we can um, move towards a reduced set of options and ultimately a reduced set of prototypes that we all feel really good about to go into the testing phase. So it's probably an unsatisfactory answer, but if you like option A or B from the vision, you can see how option A or B might express itself in this prototype um, or not, or maybe it's just a streamlined assessment system and we're, we're not opting for option A or B from the vision. And I would elaborate just a little bit to say, um, totally agree with Susan, I think, um, just a little more specifically, you could say, I really like prototype one if, we're seeing option A or option B in it. You know, if, if that's if that's part of the feedback that you have, if if your buffet is defined by a particular assessment option relative to the prototypes, let us know that because I think that informs the iteration. Jennifer, could you go back to that slide, please? The previous slide. Um, one more. Let's just see the first part of the prototype. Sorry. Um, 
what what I like about um, this prototype is that it it closely aligns to a lot of the conversation and work of our local laboratories of learning. Um, a lot of the prototyping that are happening within those districts um, have this uh, hope combination of a of a, a smaller footprint of uh, of the assessment. I, I guess the federal accountability portion that that would stay in place and a, a broader view of uh, some of that locally determined criteria. Um, so I, I like that part of it. I also like just from working uh, and coaching many of them, the part about the school, uh, co the color labels being eliminated. Um, when we looked at the design principles, specifically, I think it's 12 where it talks about gaming systems and those kinds of things. Um, oftentimes, the driving force of uh, the, the ranking and sorting is the color. I mean, a single color uh, really causes a lot of, of angst um, and uh, takes our focus off the learning and puts it on uh, a product or a performance. Uh, so that's what I like about this prototype is that it it really puts more focus on students and learning and how to improve and grow instead of the final performance uh, of a color. Thank you, Susan. Is there any other feedback on prototype one? Hey, yeah, I think this is probably my favorite out of all four prototypes. My my question is, um, it seems like this involves the most radical change at the state level. So how optimistic are we that that's feasible for us? And I'm looking at my policy colleague. <laughs> <we> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it is important to note that, um, you know, the General Assembly did just um, overhaul in many ways, right, the state's accountability system to put the, the color rankings in place. And there was obviously a tremendous amount of support for that to have gotten enacted. And so this would require a pretty tremendous reversal or maybe it reversal is not the right word, a different direction. Um, so there would need to be um, a lot of advocacy that would need to happen um, to you know, build support for this particular approach. Um, it's it's um, also, I think the legislature would wanna be thinking about capacity building. How do we make sure that, you know, our communities are ready for an approach like this? So um, there would be a lot of work that would need to happen on the state side in order to um, achieve, you know, readiness for this kind of approach. Um, the other piece to think about too, you know, is on the federal side. Um, some of the changes that we talked about in this particular space is, you know, we would need to be shrinking the the federal footprint, um, you know, down to kind of the minimum of, of math and ELA. Um, and that would require the state to actually change the assessments um, that are currently required under state law. Um, so there's, um, uh, what is it, writing and social studies, those are not federally required, but the state has adopted those. So those changes would also need to be reflected as well. Um, so there's a number of different, you know, considerations that would have to go into play. This would be definitely be the prototype that would require the greatest amount of state policy change in order to have it enacted. So what I'll do now is I'll just quickly introduce prototypes two, three, and four, and then we'll save hopefully 10 minutes for discussion at the end, so I'll do my best to um, go through these uh, quickly. Uh, each of these sort of interacts with the state and federal policy differently. Prototype two 
is focused on, again, state accountability, but instead of enacting the full vision um, for accountability in the state accountability space, we would just be taking that vibrant learning experiences domain and testing that in the state accountability space. So this prototype two is really adopting a process-based school level indicator of vibrant learning experiences within the state accountability system. And this would um, be again, rubric based and schools would be evaluated based on the quality of evidence that they were able to submit towards this rubric. Again, it could be sort of flexibly determined how schools gather and submit evidence, but the rubric would be the same. We're envisioning here a five point rubric evaluating the strength of the evidence provided relative to the vibrancy of learning experiences. And we're proposing in this prototype that, you know, if a school is scoring a four or a five on this rubric, that perhaps that's reflected in their color changing, in their color um, rating, so that a school is able to move from a yellow to a green in their rating. So this isn't rewriting and revamping the entire state system, but rather testing one of these more accreditation style indicators in the state accountability system. Um, We'll move to the um, prototype three, Jennifer. And Sorry, it just went away. Oh, it just... <laughs> no worries. I'll just speak to it while you're working okay. on that. Prototype three, instead of playing in the state accountability sandbox, in prototype three, we're really looking at incorporating more local evidence of vibrancy within the federal accountability framework. And because of the requirements and regulations put on federal accountability, um, the indicator itself is a bit more constrained. So this, uh, this would be a menu of options type indicator used to evaluate school quality within the federal school accountability system. It would be the percentage of students engaged in one or more of the following experiences. And these, you'll look familiar if you were part of our Accelerating Innovation Working Group. These are sort of the seven menu of options ideas that originally um, were proposed by that group, or at least considered by that group. Um, in this, we would also, and this is sort of like another piece, Betty, that you could sort of take or leave as you're considering your full plated meal here. Um, we are thinking about changing the change indicate federal accountability indicator to instead be an individual student growth indicator, which we think sort of more accurately reflects the vision that that was presented by our working group members back in April. Um, and so this is a student level indicator within federal accountability. Um, so no changes then to the state accountability system envisioned here. And then prototype four is the um, just what we can do with a reimagined data display. So if we are unable to successfully advance a vision through the Kentucky General Assembly or with changes to our federal accountability system, um, this prototype four considers what's possible to signal the value of local innovations within a reimagined reporting display. And so schools would be able to bring forth evidence of local quality on a broad set of domains in sort of a state supported but locally customizable display that allows um, the school report cards to really reflect the fullness and the of the intention of the vision, even if school, schools aren't sort of held formally accountable for any of the indicators um, and domains displayed there. And so this gives us about 10 minutes to talk through the differences, clarify how these prototypes interact with each other and with state policy, and to get your feedback on which of these prototypes would you want to discuss more at our July meeting with the full cool council? Jennifer, I'll turn it to you to maybe facilitate this discussion now. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. So um, we've had um, a brief overview, but 
uh, you've had the prototype document for several weeks now, and I know that you some of you have read it thoroughly because we've gotten um, some responses back from the survey, which were excellent and very thoughtful and detailed. So <clears throat> we want to make sure that the next iteration of the prototype document reflects your voice. So are there any prototypes or any pieces of the prototypes that you can not support, that you would just say, I am much opposed to this prototype or even this section of the prototype. So I open it up for you to, to comment on that. I'll, I'll start us off just by building on what I was um, discussing before and uh, kind of building on what, what Jordan just put in the chat. That uh, prototype one seems to most closely reflect the moonshot. Um, when, when I look at the others, I do like certain components of those as a part of um, a new moonshot-ish kind of accountability system. I feel like um, two and three don't actually focus on learning. Um, it's not, even, neither of them help hold us accountable for the learning that's happening. They're more about reporting the types of experiences that are provided um, by the adults not necessarily the learning that's that's happening within the kid with, with the kids uh which is our which is our job although i think the reporting um and all of those other things lead to learning uh, Um, just adding that on to our current system is going to be very popular um, across the state when our state is holding their breath, waiting for this new innovative way um, to show success in meaningful ways, uh, more so than that. So um, I really like prototype one, but I like parts and pieces of the others that could be uh, Part of that so that's just my thinking I completely agree with what you said Susan I'm I'm in the go big or go home camp right now and I feel like prototype one is the only go big one like we've been talking for over a year now about a moonshot and about thoroughly changing the accountability system and I feel like I, I agree I do I do like some of the pieces of two and three but a lot of it's just semantics it's taking our current complicated system and just adding more stuff to it and it's not making a difference in what we're doing with students and what we're asking schools to do with students and be held accountable to doing with students. I think One each of one. each of them has positives and negatives. Uh, Point of just counting numbers of experiences is quantitative, not qualitative. So I don't think we want to go in that direction. I think in the first prototype, we're going to have huge issues with leveling in the districts and where districts are, mm -hmm. and how you will um, ensure that you're able to. We're able. The time is going to take to bring districts and experiences up to ensure that all students are getting quality opportunities. I think we just have to realize that and uh, be thinking about and how would that happen in order to be even to implement one, what preparations and what experiences, how do we even get there? And I know there's a lot in there about professional learning experiences. I, I just think it's broader and, and I even, um, when we're talking about something Huge, and I agree. I think that the fourth one is more just uh, continuing the same, maybe looking, reporting a little differently, but not really changing the system at all. Uh, I just think we have we have to be careful about how we're going to share this 
and be prepared for the questions that will come and making sure we have some type of answer that I'm not sure we do yet. And um, I, even as simple as going down to the rubric, the rubric levels did were really descriptive enough to tell a difference. I mean, even to that point of everything we have to do has to be to the point that people can understand it. And, um, and I, so I think there's a lot of really great, great things in here. And um, that looking at the two options and what, I just think there's still a lot more to do. But am I, am I, uh, do I think these are okay to share in July? Yeah, I think we want to have more voices, what more people have to say about this. Um, but let's not realize that there's, there's a tremendous amount of, uh, work that has to be done before we get to this conclusion. And at one point I know it talked about having the L3 someplace, I don't remember where it was, helping to determine things, and we certainly don't. Never forget that comment, that's a personal experience that I've had. Uh, I'm just saying there's some really good things, but I think I think that uh, they're, and that they're ready for, I think, for the whole group to discuss, but there has to be a lot of, and what else do we need to do that we haven't addressed yet? Well, I think we got to be careful too, because the teachers are the ones on the battlefield and getting the system together, that's going to be easy for them to understand and a system that they can use to um, intervene in students learning. Um, if we get it too complicated, like the one we have now with all these colors, I, I think you'll have more teachers going, I'm done with this and be gone. Um, but I really think we need to consider them and consider what they're going to have to do in order to support um, and maybe even lift up student learning in the classroom. <laughs> I just remember one comment or comments I had from a group of uh, primary teachers when we had the early childhood initiative that we put in, and they said, gosh, we just can't do this. It's just too much of, you know, everything. And I said, well, do you want to go back to the way it was? Well, no, they don't want to do that. So you have to be prepared of how you're going to give that support and structure, because you're right. And it's not, it's going to be the teachers, but it's going to be the, that's, uh, the whole support structure for them. And we knew that going in on this. I mean, so that's not saying any of this is wrong. It's just saying I think we need to get to the point and say, well, if we're going to do this, what do we have to do? And it's beyond policy. It's not just policy. So what else do we have to ensure that we do this so this can be an equitable accountability and assessment system? And that's going to take a lot of work. One of the things that we heard is, and I think that I'm hearing a kind of a, a theme here, and it was similar to the same thing that we heard on Thursday, is the the comment that Sarah made, and I've heard Susan and others say, is that maybe the prototype one meets the, that vision more fully. Um, and that we should uh, move forward with uh, that prototype and maybe looking at um, other ways to pr provide opportunities for feedback other than those prototypes. So the analogy that, that Susan that Susan made was, you know, we, we played it within those prototypes, but maybe um, maybe we take these key components, leaving prototype one, but take those key components that we've heard you like into a second prototype that allows people to respond to each of those different components. Because I do realize that um, this is a shorter meeting than we had on Thursday and um, 
we have um, a, a limited amount of time here. So what would you all think about moving forward with prototype one and then taking prototype two and then using that as the buffet style to put the components out so that people can respond to each of the different essential features of the of what we've discussed. I think it's also important on prototype one to ask them what do you like, what do you not like? Absolutely. Because while we may yes. like the general that it is the one who looks for change, there may be things in there that aren't acceptable. Yeah. I almost so wonder. Go ahead, Kathy. I, I just want to be clear on what Jennifer was saying. So, Jennifer, are you saying taking uh, prototypes two, three, and four and making them a menu, making them that buffet? Is that did I misunderstand what you were saying? Provide giving them prototype one as it is, and then taking th certain things from the other three. Did I understand that correctly? Yes, with just a little modification to one, uh, the prototype uh, one that gives a little bit more information because you all have had really good questions about um, the different pieces of that. And so provide a little bit more detail in prototype one and then uh -huh. take prototype two and take some of those essential features out of the others like the the vibrant learning experience indicator, put that in prototype two, and then a little explanation, and then collect people's feedback on each of those different components. Okay. All right. I understand now. Thank okay. you. Now, I get some clarification around the two options at the beginning. So is each of the prototypes an option A and an option B for how the districts can be accountable? Or am I misunderstanding that? I don't understand that either. So I'm right there with you. Like I'm confused I, on what the option A and option B is, and then we've got four prototypes. So yeah. is it yeah. you do it this way for each one of those things? And those are the two ways you can do it, or are those completely separate? Or what am I missing here? Yeah, Sarah, I think that's great feedback, and we yes. absolutely heard that in the other group as well. So we're going to clar you know, clarify what are the option points and where do they show up in each of the prototypes and probably in these more two streamlined prototypes that Jennifer just mentioned. So that the options aren't in the vision. The vision is more um, reflective of what you all said in April at a high level, and then the prototypes get into more detail and more specific about what, what are the option points. So uh, but when you all were thinking about the options, were the options for the host system and we can go one way or the other, or the options for the districts and the districts can go one way? What were you thinking with the options? For the state, for the state. Yeah. Well, they could go one way or the yeah. other. Right. Okay. Yeah, and, and just, just some quick context on that. We realized uh, when we were reflecting and coming out of um, the April convening conversations that we had a really robust conversation about sort of accountability elements, but we didn't really touch on assessment. We heard some things that we knew, um, you know, a desire for more real-time data, you know, a desire for more meaningful assessment experiences, but we didn't actually know what to do with that. So we didn't feel comfortable moving forward with a solid prototype approach around that. So the options were meant to get more information. So then we can reflect those in prototypes moving forward. So the options are more assessment choices and the prototypes are more accountability choices. Moving forward, all of that will be integrated. That, that makes a lot more sense. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I just, is, only is that I, go ahead, Betty. I was going to say, is it possible that you would combine options one and two to there is another option? One excludes and one, you know, is there some meeting place in the middle of those options that, that's better than one or the other? You have some suggestions relative to that, how to kind of, if there's a merged version or something. Um, well, Let us know, or if that's the guidance, or you say you want you want us to put our heads down and think about that, then we can. They try just to seem to be that. going at it completely differently. 
they're like extremes, it seems like. And is there something in the middle that actually feels better? Not to muddy the waters further, but I'm gonna pull a page out of Kathy's book and talk about where is early literacy um, taking place in this accountability system, especially with the state's recent focus on with last year's or year four Senate Bill 9 on the Read to Succeed Act and all the direction that's going into that. And I feel like if we don't have something in there, and that's an actually question that I'd, I'd received, um, was what impact will early literacy scores, especially if we're thinking about moving towards current um, interim benchmark assessments rather than one end of the year summative assessment where the students have moved on by the time the, the, the school gets the results. So I'm getting in real time results so I can work with students. How is that going to be factored in? Because that was a key part of the discussion for me in April was the possible shift into benchmark style assessments where I'm getting results and getting accountability points based on real time data with the students sitting in front of me as the teacher, not waiting till to be told how I did with last year's kids when I don't have any impact on it. And yes, Kathy, I see it. But I, I think that's a key point. The literacy piece with if if we're going to emphasize all that with the Kentucky Reese to Succeed Act, but then we're not putting it into the accountability system. I'm like, is it important or not? And I, I would say it is because it impacts everything you're doing third grade up. If you can't read, you can't do any of that. And I'm off my soapbox now, Kathy. You can take your spot back on it. Yeah, and, and I guess also on option A, where we have the state privatizing math and reading and then leaving it up to the district, the way I understand it, to do. Is it head EG science social studies and the arts? Is it EG or IE? If it's EG, then I have concerns. And heaven help us. I wish we go back to everyone had civics. Maybe we'd be in a different place now. We really understood that, but I understand the issues around that. Um, so I, I, I guess when it goes back to the districts, can are there still? They can vary how they assess, but are there guidelines on what they're going to assess? This is great feedback. And you can see where we're um, going to take the next iteration. So there's going to be lots and lots of discussion as we move forward. So that iterative feedback, those plans, you'll see uh, that the next iteration of the prototypes document will reflect some of these um, good points that you're making, as well as then when we come into the July convening, we'll continue the conversation and continue to make updates and advances in that prototype doc document. I do want to say I think you all done a fabulous job in pulling this together from the comments from April. So don't take any of our comments as being criticism. It's Chris. I think he he did a, an amazing job pulling this to the point where it is now. Thank you. We've got a an excellent team here of facilitators, and I'm so thankful to be able to work with them uh, almost daily now. <laughs> and um, and. We have much to, to do, so it's off of your comments, and we we don't take anything that you say personally, uh, because we want this document to reflect the menu of options work group members, and uh, we want you to provide that that direction and that guidance so that it does reflect what your thoughts are. Okay, so. Um, Again, I, I thank you very much. I want to see if Robin Kenny is still here. I know that we're we're over just a little bit. I'm still here, Jennifer. Oh, wonderful. Uh, will you? Uh, can I turn it over to you for some closing comments? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, thanks, Jennifer, and to the entire team that have been working so hard uh, on this. I also want to express my appreciation to all of our members who are serving right now. We know um, this is important to you or you wouldn't be here with us. 
So it's important to us as well. Dr. Fletcher, who's our incoming commissioner, um, was able to participate and listen in on some of the Thursday call, but unfortunately he wasn't able to join for today's conversation. So I want to assure you that he is very, very interested in this topic and is paying close attention to the feedback that is being received. Um, I think the team has done a great job, but I want to continue to emphasize as they have, this is really just a starting point. It is important that you continue to make your comments and provide your feedback um, as experts in the field and people that are the boots on the ground. Um, we appreciate and, and value that so much. I don't want to keep you longer because we have gone a little bit over, but I just felt like I, I really wanted to come on and say thank you again for your participation and to all of our partners that are working so hard to move this along quickly. There is a sense of urgency to this. Um, especially now that people know that we are getting to the point that prototypes are being developed. I can't tell you how many times that I am asked, so where are we now? Are we close? Are we getting close? People are anxious. They are eager to hear what we have to share with them. So um, thank you again for your time today. We appreciate so much you participating and giving your voice to the next accountability system. Thanks, Robin, and thanks to everyone for your feedback. If you have any other comments, uh, please feel free to email me. Uh, I'll share it with the team and move forward. So thanks for your, your participation, and we look forward to continuing the conversation.